Because of this division of powers and parallel institutions, there are some Iranian actions that simply won't make sense unless we understand them as actions by one part, one faction of the Iranian government. In an ongoing conflict between different political and religious factions. One example. In 1998, the Ayatollah Khomeini declared a fatwa against Satanic Verses author Salman Rushdie. While the reformist president, Mitt Katami, denied that there was any such fatwa or that the Iranian government was involved. The reformist Katami was trying to draw Iran closer to Western Europe and to the United States, and the Ayatollah was trying to sabotage that effort. Here's a more recent example. In 2009, Iranian President Ahmadinejad, with the Ayatollah's blessing, began negotiating with the Obama administration. But after it appeared a deal had been arrived at, Iran suddenly stepped back and refused to ship its enriched uranium out of the country. Why? Ahmadinejad made public statements suggesting that he hoped the rapprochement with the United States would go even further. Media both in Europe and in Iran, reported the results of the negotiations in ways that implied to the Iranian public that it was just the beginning of an ongoing process. Conservative clerics began criticizing Ahmadinejad, and suddenly the Ayatollah was worried about being outflanked both on the right and on the left. The Ayatollah became scared and decided to sabotage the negotiations. This sort of thing wouldn't happen in a unitary country like the United Kingdom, but it happens in the United States all the time. Here's an example that comes from these same nuclear negotiations. The Obama administration had arrived at a deal with Iran, but the Republican Senate attempting to sabotage the deal, invited a foreign leader, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, to speak to the Senate and to the American people opposing the deal. Apparently, the clerical forces and the Ayatollah got cold feet as well, because Iran tested ballistic missiles, which just happened to have anti-Israel and anti-U.S. slogans written on them, just as the deal was coming into force. If you think that sounds like an inefficient way to govern a country, you're right. Iran, like the United States, has an inefficient government with sometimes chaotic policies which are partly made up for by tremendous natural resources. To be continued.